as part of its ongoing war with the PIC. Tonight we can report that with the likely change of government in this state, change may be coming for the Crime Commission after years of contention about its secrecy, effectiveness and operating methods. The outlaw motorcycle gangs who run the now booming amphetamine market in Australia must be laughing. The Police Integrity Commission and the Crime Commission in New South Wales are at each other's throats in the courts. It's lawyers at 30 paces, taxpayers are paying. On the 18th of February, Justice Monica Smith of the Supreme Court issued a temporary order restraining the Police Integrity Commission from holding public hearings into the crime asset recovery practices of the State Crime Commission. The Crime Commission, current budget $18 million a year, was established by the RAND government in 1986 and given special powers to investigate organised crime and the drug trade and through the Criminal Assets Recovery Act, pursue, seize and recover by court order assets reasonably suspected to have been gained through criminality. Unlike other law enforcement agencies, the Crime Commission operates what's known as a Star Chamber in statutory secrecy from its Kent Street offices. Effectively, there is no right to silence for witnesses. Its long-serving commissioner, Philip Bradley, does not give interviews. Last week, Sydney Morning Herald investigative journalists Linton Besser and Dylan Welch received subpoenas from the Crime Commission to produce mobile phones, SIM cards and telecommunications records and all material relating to the Police Integrity Commission. Publisher and Editor-in-Chief Peter Frey is outraged at the Crime Commission's overreach. There's two subpoenas. One is for Besser and Welch to reveal their information, their contact with the Police Integrity Commission. And the second subpoena, which is the one that's causing us the greatest concern, not that the first one hasn't, but the, the unprecedented scope of the second subpoena, is for any Fairfax employee to reveal communications between themselves and the Police Integrity Commission over the past 12 months. I mean, this is unprecedented, and it's a threat to freedom of the press. Last month, the two investigative journalists produced a damning spread about the Crime Commission's seizure of criminal assets under the headline, Crime Does Pay. Through their sources, Freedom of Information and Annual Report Analysis, the reporters found the Crime Commission had recovered $242 million since 1990 and contributed to the arrest of 5,786 people. Impressive figures, perhaps, but who actually benchmarks ill-gotten gains? The coverage and case histories the newspaper exposed led it editorially to seriously question the Commission's methods in settling crime recovery by consent out of court in most cases, leaving suspected criminals and organised crime figures still walking away with substantial assets. Can you be set up? Can you be misled or led down a garden path by criminal elements, Mr Frey, who may uh, want to see the Crime Commission destroyed because everybody knows it has secrecy powers uh, which can crack uh, organised crime? I am 100% convinced that our journalists did their job and they did their job thoroughly and were not exploited. But it's your, it's your judgment publishing uh, the material that I'm asking. Yes, about. absolutely, and I'm 100% confident in my judgment. Police Minister Michael Daly with Commissioner Bradley, Police Commissioner Andrew Scipioni and Australian Federal Police Commissioner Tony Negus make up the Crime Commission's Management Committee. Mr Daly was unavailable for interview but told us he had full confidence in the Crime Commission. Also watching this dispute is the man most likely to be the next Police Minister after Saturday, the opposition's Mike Gallagher. Both of these organisations play an incredibly important role in our fight against organised crime as well as their fight against uh, you know, corruption within organisations. There needs to be a clear, clearly defined demarcation in terms of their roles. Um, and that needs to be spelled out. Both organisations need to know that they've got an important role, but more importantly, the public and those bodies like the New South Wales Police Force that they investigate need to have confidence that both, both organisations are focused on their job rather than each other. Why was the Police Integrity Commission pursuing the Crime Commission in the first place? The PIC declined an interview. It has not issued any public statement to explain its position. The Herald's appeal against the subpoenas will be heard on April the 14th. 
The Crime Commission is expected to argue it needs the journalist telecommunications records as evidence in its case that the PIC is exceeding its powers. I believe the vast majority of the public believe that we, we have a right to publish and the people have a right to know. That's what we do. That's our job. But that's a big moral blanket we can throw over this thing, yeah, isn't it? Uh, uh, so. uh, while we well, while we go on fishing expeditions. Well, indeed, but it's the Crime Commission that's on the fishing expedition. Now the Crime Commission, it appears, is about to be reviewed. We're going to conduct a review right across all of these secretive agencies. Uh, we're wanting to know exactly what is their charter and what are they actually doing to pursue it and who is investigating who. I mean, can you have the PIC investigating the Crime Commission? Um, does that work? What is the role of the inspectorate over the top of it? And what happens when the inspectorate brings down recommendations in relation to the PIC and they don't follow those recommendations? It's all becoming very confusing. We're not suggesting for one moment that they do not have a role. But I think it's about time we actually got a better understanding of what their roles were and got them back into those roles. Secrecy and aggressive tactics may be an operational advantage when it comes to investigating organised crime, but it may not assist in establishing your organisation's integrity and accountability. Something to consider, Commissioner Bradley, with very great respect. It's been a long election campaign.